Male anglerfish. In the deep ocean, where sunlight disappears and pressure turns most animals into biological paste, the anglerfish survives by following rules that sound less like evolution and more like a dare. The female is a rough, heavy predator with a glowing lure dangling from her forehead. That tiny light is her only tool for hunting in a world darker than the inside of a cave. Below her, the male exists as a biological afterthought. He's only a few centimeters long, barely developed, and completely incapable of feeding himself properly. His metabolism is so slow and weak that if he doesn't find a mate quickly, he simply fades out like a low-battery flashlight. When he finally finds a female, he doesn't court her. He attaches. He bites into her skin, fuses with her body, and slowly dissolves until only his gonads remain. His circulatory system merges with hers. She feeds him, oxygenates him, and carries him as a permanent accessory. Some females host multiple fused males lined up along their bodies like a collection of unfortunate earrings. Deep sea life is already brutal, but being reduced to a living attachment port adds a level of existential sadness that no other relationship on Earth manages to reach. Cicada The 17-year cicada lives according to one of the most extreme countdowns in the animal kingdom. When the nymph hatches, it immediately drops into the soil and digs downward until it finds a root to tap into. And then, nothing. For exactly 17 years, it stays hidden underground. No sunlight. No movement beyond shifting between roots. No variety. Just a lifetime's worth of waiting compressed into the body of an insect the size of a grain of rice. All that patience is spent on a single moment. When the soil reaches about 64 degrees Fahrenheit, billions of cicadas emerge at once across entire regions. They climb the nearest surface, split open their backs, pull out their adult bodies, and wait for their wings to dry. They have just four to six weeks to fly, call, find a mate, and lay their eggs before dying. Their adult phase is shorter than the average return period of lost luggage. And for the stragglers, the ones who misread nature's schedule and emerge one year early or late, the tragedy is sharper. After nearly two decades of waiting, they surface into total silence. No swarm, no mates, just a calendar error that ends their life before it begins. Sunfish, mola mola. The sunfish looks less like a completed animal and more like a draft sketch someone accidentally approved. It's essentially a floating head, Enormous, flattened, and vertically tall, reaching 2.5 to 3 meters in height while weighing up to 2,000 kilograms. Despite that mass, it swims at a gentle 2 claw per hour, unable to turn quickly, flee effectively, or even control its direction if the current disagrees. Its diet consists mostly of jellyfish, which contain so few calories that the sunfish must eat constantly just to break even. And yet, despite being huge, it is one of the ocean's easiest targets. Sea lions and sharks frequently bite large chunks out of sunfish bodies, not out of malice, but because they can. The sunfish simply drifts away with open wounds. Its thick skin and slow metabolism let it survive damage that would kill other fish. The parasite problem is legendary. Over 40 species infest the sunfish, covering its skin, gills, and even internal tissues. To get relief, the sunfish floats to the surface and lies sideways, inviting seabirds to peck parasites off its body. It also warms itself in the sun, even though prolonged exposure gives it literal sunburn. A two-ton animal that gets sunburned while being named sunfish could only come from a universe that enjoys irony. Naked Mole Rat Underground in East Africa, the naked mole rat spends its life inside tight, branching tunnels that feel more like a system of biological plumbing than a home. These animals are nearly blind, hairless, wrinkled, and pale pink, resembling something between an old sausage and a misfiled laboratory prototype. Their world lacks light, fresh air, and personal space. The tunnel network can stretch for miles, yet every corridor is roughly the width of a mole rat's body which means squeezing is a permanent lifestyle. Their social structure copies that of ants or bees. One queen breeds, a few males assist, 
Everyone else is a worker for life. Workers dig through dense soil, haul food, care for pups, expand tunnels, and defend the colony. Their bodies are adapted to low oxygen, high carbon dioxide, and low pain sensitivity. They can withstand conditions that would kill almost any other mammal. The strangest part is their longevity. Naked mole rats can live over 30 years, a lifespan unheard of for rodents this small. That means decades of darkness, decades of labor, and decades without ever seeing the sun. In the mole rat world, retirement does not exist. Lemming The lemming is famous for something it never actually did, jumping off cliffs on purpose. That idea came from a faked 1958 film where the producers physically pushed lemmings off a ledge for dramatic footage. The truth is different and grim in a way that doesn't need exaggeration. Lemmings experience extreme population booms every few years. When the numbers explode, food disappears and the small rodents are forced to migrate. Not gracefully, not strategically, just thousands of tiny mammals rushing across tundra that does not care about their survival. They fall into rivers, get swept into lakes, freeze in storms, or wander into terrain where predators barely need to try. Their average lifespan is less than one year, and during that time they are hunted by owls, foxes, weasels, and nearly anything else with teeth. The migrations create the illusion of coordinated mass movement, but it's really panic, hunger, and the geography of the Arctic. Lemmings don't leap to their deaths. Their world simply gives them an endless series of fatal options. Greenland Shark The Greenland shark lives on a timeline that makes human history feel rushed. Some individuals swimming today were alive during the early 1600s. They grow incredibly slowly, only about one centimeter per year, and likely don't reach sexual maturity until around 150 years old. Their world is the deep Arctic, where temperatures hover just above freezing and light barely penetrates. They drift through this darkness at approximately 0.3 meters per second, slower than most people walk. They feed irregularly, scavenging dead whales, seals, fish, and anything they encounter, sometimes going years between substantial meals. Their flesh is naturally toxic due to high levels of trimethylamine oxide, which helps them survive freezing depths. Many Greenland sharks host large parasitic coat pods that attach directly to their eyes, chewing away at the corneal tissue until vision is almost gone. The shark does not remove them. It simply continues gliding through centuries of quiet water, blind, slow, and unhurried. Its life is a long, cold drift through a world that barely changes, a biological endurance test measured not in years, but in ages. After all these extreme lives, one thing is clear. Nature doesn't just create survivors, it creates specialists on hard mode. And remember, no matter how strange your day gets, at least it's not as depressing as theirs. Stay curious, and see you in the next episode.